Hey, happy Monday, everyone. It is Coffee and Questions time. Hope everybody had a great weekend. Uh, we did a lot of stuff this weekend. A uh, little frustration on Saturday morning, which many of you know. In regards to that, the LTS, uh, the first half went relatively uh, pain-free. But then it got went downhill from there. But uh, I think we got it. Everything posted on uh, on YouTube. I did the second half by myself, as, as in case you guys haven't seen it. And that's the the LTS uh, May thirtieth. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I uh, hope it was helpful for you guys. Uh, that walnut was really, uh, really nice material. It was fun to carve. So, uh, for today, a few announcements first. I, I wanted to get the LTS thing out of the way. Um, you guys know that when we were doing six videos a week, that the reason I kind of backed off, or some of you know, in case you're brand new to the channel, we used to do six videos a week. But... Um, some advice that we got from uh, Gary Vaynerchuk is that to drop it back to three videos a week, which we're, now we're actually doing four with the, the thing on Saturday with Dad. Um, and for that, I was going to take the time that I was using to produce all those videos and, uh, and contact uh, YouTube influencers to try and grow the channel. By the way, we just hit 7,500 subscribers, so thank you guys so much. We're just, um, just humbled by uh, how many subscribers we have, um, but we need to grow the channel more. So uh, here is an a instance of a, one that I just made and shipped the other day. I didn't I didn't get it on film so this is uh i think it 18 by 18 and this is a youtube channel fairly large uh, car youtube channel and that's kind of the ones i'm i'm concentrating on right now is the one because i love cars so um and my thinking is that there are some guys out there that uh, are into cars that may also be into woodworking so anyway that's one i did and another one that i'm I shipped that uh, or late last week. Another one that I'm uh, shipping today is, uh, I think his name is Mark Freeman, and uh, he's a motocross guy, uh, motorcycle rider. This is his his number, 408, and uh, so I made a deal with him, and I made him actually two, two different signs. His, uh, and he's got a large channel as well, and his uh, sponsor is... Rockstar. So I made these two signs for him and I'm shipping them off today and uh, hopefully he'll give me a shout out and when I hear about shout outs on uh, uh, on YouTube um, I'll let you guys know on some of these influencers that uh, that uh, give us uh, give us some exposure on their channels. Uh, should have some this week that uh, that I'll tell you about hopefully on Wednesday. So anyway, uh, uh, the reason I even go into that, guys, not a kind of a not a self promotion thing, but just to let you know that that is something that you guys could do. I'm doing this. Here's what I put on the back of my signs, by the way. I'm doing this to grow the channel, uh, to you know, to help more people learn how to make signs. But if I wanted to, did you get that, babe? I think so. Oh, okay. No, I did. Oh, okay. But if I wanted to sell a bunch of signs, I certainly could sell a boatload of signs doing exactly the same kind of thing um, and, uh, and, and doing, again, you can pick whatever genre you want um, or, or just any large channels. And uh, I'm probably getting one out of ten that uh, emails that I send that, uh, that email me back and said, sure, we'd love to uh, give you a shout out if you want to make a sign for us. So um, I'm making these at no charge for any of you that don't know what I'm doing. I'm making these at no charge for those channels, and then they, in turn, will then promote my channel. So um, it's collaboration. So anyway, again, I think the same thing would work for, um, for selling signs. Uh, I'm not, that's not why I'm doing it, but uh, if you want to sell more signs, it certainly is a, a great way to do it. So anyway, all right, so we will get into the questions of the day the first one i you know i didn't write down who this came from 
uh, but it says, Eric, today I was using a profile bit to carve some inset letters. I set the bit a little deeper to cover the letters in one pass. Uh, I, wasn't, I wasn't using your lettering, so I'm not sure what style and what font it was. I was having control problems doing this with the depth or maybe the grain of the wood uh, be the issue. Uh, and it was cedar fencing. And again, I'm sorry, I, didn't, I, I don't know who it was that sent that in. Uh, but it was probably a little while back. So this is, in case you guys don't know, this is my profile bit. <clears throat> Sorry, babe, I kind of just sprung that on yeah, you, didn't you I? Did. Okay. Are you getting it? I think so. So that's the profile bit. And as you can see, guys, it's got a taper to it. So the deeper that you go, the more material you're going to be cutting out. Almost all of our bits are V-groove and have a taper to them. So, to answer his question, would it be the depth or maybe the grain of the wood uh, and the cedar fencing? So, this is the cedar fencing that he's using. Uh, this is rough. I've got several different pieces here. Um, but, uh, my guess is it would be a combination of both. So, the deeper you go, the more wood that you're taking out, the, uh, the more drag is going to be on that router base. And when you hit a grain, the thing about this cedar fencing, like I talked about the other day, is it's very soft where there's not a grain. But when you hit a grain, if you're taking out a lot of wood, um, then that's where the bobble could come in or the, 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 the issue with holding a straight line and keeping, uh, how did he put it, uh, control problems. So when you hit, uh, and this is, um, this is a fairly flat grain, but when you're carving in this area, let me use my profile bit to point this out. You're bopping all over. I oh, can't. sorry. So when you're carving in this area right here where there's no grain, it'll be very, very soft, almost like uh, balsa wood or marshmallow. That's what the term I use. But when you hit this grain with that bit, the deeper that you're going, the more likely that that thing is going to go try and go sideways on you. So that's where the practice comes in, guys. And um, that's where having your bits very sharp makes a huge difference as well. So my suggestion, if you're having issues with that, go in two different passes. Go, uh, go shallow first because the, the, uh, the less amount of material that you're taking out, the less chance, that less likely that it's going to try and go sideways on you when you hit that grain. Okay, so try and take it in two passes. If you're having control issues, back it off, go shallow, and then go back and make a second cut at it. That's what I always do if I have issues with, uh, which I don't really have that much anymore. Um, this, I still love this material, but that's the only issue with it, is sometimes when you hit the grain, it will try and kind of go sideways on you. Also, you might look at my videos on directional carving. Um, I can't remember what number they are, but go back and look at the playlists and uh, scan the titles for directional carving. I think I've made two or three, four videos on that. That will help you as well. So um, I hope that uh, helps you guys out. So the second question of the day, again regarding the cedar fencing, that's why I brought several boards out. Uh, Johnny Leos says... Um, Seems lately that all of the red cedar boards at locals uh, at local lows are really bad, full of knots, warped. Home Depot is even worse. Is there any particular time of year that the cedar planks are better? Uh, attached is one of my signs, but I, I didn't print out one of his signs. But um, I don't I don't really find that Johnny. Uh, and for any of you that know uh, that I use the cedar fencing, and he doesn't really say that he's using the cedar fencing. I'm assuming that he is. Um, but if you're having a problem with with knots and uh, and warping or cupping, uh, let me. I think one of these has a pretty good cup to it. You can see that that's got a pretty good cup to it. So this would be the surface of my sign. But this has also got some knots in it. But these kind of knots, uh, you know, just don't bother me at all. I can carve right through those. This one here, uh, since that's gonna be the surface, would be a little bit better than if it was 
that part of the knot, but it's still, it's still very viable for a sign. Here's one that's got a couple knots in it that just, it wouldn't bother me at all. Now this one, the knot kind of goes through to the edge. So what I would do is I would push on that and see if I could get it to, to loosen up a little bit. And if it does loosen up, which this one has a little bit of movement, what I would do is I would take some white glue or tight bond, whatever kind of, you know, regular glue. And I literally would just put glue on there and, sh and, and wipe it off and shove glue down in there to, to solidify that knot so it won't work, it won't uh, move on you. And the same on this one. Of course, this one isn't, isn't open at the back, just at the front, but I might put a little putty in there or just, uh, just a, a puddle of little white glue and then just wipe it off, let it dry, and then just pretend like it's not even there because your router bits, especially if you're using my router bits, will fly right through that stuff. Shouldn't have any issues at all. But you do want knots. If you're going to have knots, you don't want them. That one's got a little bit of movement on it. Not much, but um, I definitely would put some glue in there and solidify those up so they don't move. Here's another one that's got some knots to it. Now these are a little different kind of knots. These really are solid. They won't move on you. I would make a sign out of that, no problem at all. Now this particular knot has a little crack in it. So I would putty that with probably my walnut, uh, uh, walnut uh, wood dough um, and let it dry and then sand it off and, uh, and make a sign out of it. So that wouldn't be an issue for me at all. So just because it's got knots in it, guys, don't think that you can't use it. You know, depending on what kind of knots they are, and I've showed a couple of different ones, depending on what kind of knots they are, it's still usable. And not only that, it makes a spectacular sign. Once you get it all carved and then you uh, throw a finish on there, uh, the knots just give it more character. People like knots in their signs. So, uh, or at least that's my experience. That's what I found. So I, minutes. we're at 12 minutes already? Holy moly. I'm getting long winded today. All right. So, well, I've had a whole weekend to think about this. So, all right. Sign carvers of the day. My buddy. Jim Kotchenberger, again, I can't even remember how many times this guy's been sign carver of the day, but he just, man, it just makes some spectacular stuff. I said that a lot the other day, huh? Yeah. Spectacular. I yeah. like spectacular. He makes some great stuff. So, uh, sign carver of the day, uh, Jim Kotchenberger. Great job, Jim. Okay. Got it? All right. And second sign carver of the day, Jeremy and Wendy. Wagoner. This is their the name of their uh, their company. I wish it was a little bit closer up, but it's a long board, obviously. Really neat, done with uh, Western letters, and uh, like the edge on there. Really nice sign. So I hope I got it. I can't tell. Yeah, it's hard to tell with the sun shining the way it is like this. Beautiful spring day. We're finally getting some nice weather. Okay. So uh, I like the, the rustic edge on there. Great job, you guys. Terrific. Okay, what am I forgetting? Um, oh, yeah, uh, on the uh, LTS the other day, we mentioned the upcoming Vegas seminar, so stay tuned. We should have some news for you, maybe Wednesday, maybe Friday, maybe next week. But we'll keep giving you updates on what's going on there. So they are going to be, again, uh, four different uh, seminars, assuming we have enough interest. But the seminars will be in, uh, in October. Okay, uh, if you have any questions on that, my email is here. Uh, you can give us a call. <clears throat> any questions, let us know. But there's a lot of details back on the LTS from Saturday before we uh, lost our signal. So I guess that's it. Hey, guys, have a great week. I hope you make some sawdust and uh, let me know your success stories, what you guys are doing out there to sell signs. Uh, I'd love to share it with a group. Keep the questions coming. You know, keep asking questions. I uh, love it. So I need more, more questions so I can inter uh, interact with you guys. So we will see you on, oh, by the way, coming up right now is uh, Dad's Thought of the Day. So uh, stay tuned for that, and we will see you guys on Wednesday morning. Have a great week, everybody. Hope you're enjoying your uh, Monday morning. Have some coffee. Make some sawdust. Be happy. See ya. Bye. Hey, folks. Old Dave here with a thought for today. Uh, I want to talk to you just, just briefly about sportsmanship. I learned about sportsmanship at an early age. When I was a, when I was a young boy in my preteens and teens, 
he used to go out to the local golf course hunt golf, <coughs> lost golf balls and I'd sell them back to the golfers to use as practice. And I'd hunt in the hazards and the water hazards and in the roughs, just any place likely to find the lost ball. And sportsmanship I learned in that it's, it's only good sportsmanship not to ever pick up lost golf balls while they're still rolling. We'll see you next time.